You don't know. So yes, mental, mental health issues are real. But today I'm hoping that you will leave with a toolbox with some information knowing the signs of mental illnesses. The signs of mental illnesses. And I'm going to talk about four, just four, because there's so many. But the four that I think are important are stress, anxiety, depression, and suicide. Because all of these things are so relevant. And you need to know what some of the signs are. Next. Here's some facts about mental health. There's more than five, but I'm just going to start off with five. More than 50 million Americans struggle with, mental, with a mental illness. Mental illnesses can affect people of any age, any race, any religion, and it don't matter how much money you have. If it wants to get on you, it's going to be there. If it wants to get in that brain, it's going to be there. Two in five young people, this, look at this age, ages 13 to 18, has or will develop a mental illness in their lifetime. One in five. Mm -hmm. Youth depression rates. Youth depression rates have risen from 12.9% to 25.2% from pandemic, pre-pandemic, pre-pandemic, before COVID-19 to today, so it's gone 2023. Up. So see that it has risen. Man. Common signs of illnesses, of issues with mental health include mood swings, Sometimes they're crying, sometimes they're happy, and sometimes they're not. Changes in the eating habit. They may say, I don't want anything to eat today, mama. Even though you fix the meal that I like, those greens, that, those collard greens, those yams, they don't want it. They turn it down. They go back into their room. Excess is worry or fear. Problems concentrating. And avoiding friends or social activities. Things you know that they used to do, used to want to go to, they don't want to participate in them, any, in them anymore. Activities, maybe they were on basketball team. Don't want to do it anymore. You think they're getting up, getting dressed, they're going to the go to a, an activity? They change their mind. They're back in the room, in the bed, door closed, Covers over their head, not wanting to come out. Next. All right, here we're going to get to some of the different illnesses. Okay, stress, anxiety, depression, and suicide. The two most common. There are a number of mental health issues that cause young people to feel less than their best. But the two common are stress and anxiety. We all experience stress and anxiety from time to time. That's a part of being human. However, too much stress or anxiousness can interfere with our day-to-day -day function. That's right. Too much of it can interfere with our day-to-day -day function. So let's begin by defining both stress and then anxiety. Stress. Mm -hmm. Stress is your body's reaction to change, demands, and situations. Worry and there is a perception of a threat. Something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we're feeling stressed out. Often we feel stressed because we worry about tomorrow. What's tomorrow going to be? Tomorrow's Friday. Am I going to get a paycheck? Is something going to happen? Well, I'm going to throw some Bible in here. But Matthew 6, 34 tells us, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Amen. Yes. But that does not mean we don't do anything. Right, right. We need to study. 
to prepare. So plan to deal with things that you can the best you can. Preparation is the key for dealing with tomorrow. Not worry. Man. All right. This one you get you guys get to participate. I'm gonna have your little quiz. If you need a pistol or a pen, let me know. My my teammate over here, my my daughter Janessa got some pencils for anybody that needs a writing utensil. Get a, get a ushers, uh, and if there's someone that just so came in and need a handout, let us know. All right, I saw hands, some hands going up, Janessa. Raise your hands up high so Janessa can see you. So it says, read each question, circle yes or no. I'm going to give Janessa time to make sure you have a hand out. Go ahead, read the questions. All right, I'm going to start reading the questions. Do you often feel overwhelmed? Yes or no? Do you have trouble sleeping? Yes or no? Do you get more headaches than usual? Yes or no? Do you have a hard time relaxing? Yes or no? Do you panic when thinking about everything that you need to do? Yes or no? You can go to the next. Go to the next. Next. All right. So if you if you if you answer if all those were yes, well, majority. Then you may need to start start thinking about what you can do to reduce that stress. So here's some things how to reduce your stress. First, let's identify some of those things in your life that are causing you stress. School assignments, you got math, you got social studies, you got science, you got, um, what are some other ones? You got ELA. ELA, oh yeah, ELA, Spanish. E, oh, somebody said, no, ELC, ELCs, oh, e, ELC, end of grade or end of course exams, yes. Household responsibilities, dishes, cooking, vacuuming, laundry, and the list goes on and on. Oh, relationships. Mm -mm. Maybe that relationship is stressing you out. That boyfriend. Maybe that person is texting you too much. Asking you, are you going to text me back? Where are you? I haven't heard from you lately. Stressing me out. All right. This is something you need to do, maybe. Create a weekly or daily to-do list. Create a weekly or daily to-do list. So you can check things off as you complete them. All right. Some... Let's talk about some activities. You can, you, some activities you can just create on, on me. You can uh, sometimes do on your own as needed. Sometimes you need to prioritize your activities. First, second, third, fourth, and so forth. All right, here's something. This is what I like. I really, really like. How do we do stress? Pray. Pray. Get on those knees in their praying closet. Talk to the Lord and watch things happen. Get support. Many people in your circle can help support you. Engage in various activities such as, and I just listed a few. You can come up with some of your own, but I, I came up with two. Exercise and reading. Just two. All right, continue. All right, moving to the next topic, anxiety. Anxiety, what is anxiety? Anxiety is an intense, excessive, and persistent, not just a one-time thing, it keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. Persistent worry and fear of 
about everyday situations. Mm -hmm. Your heart starts beating fast at a fast rate. Your breathing increases. You're feeling tired. These are just some of the characteristics of anxiety. But here goes some more Bible for us, another Bible scripture. Philippians 4, 6 says, do not be anxious about anything. Mm -hmm. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, everything that you do, that you say, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Present your request to God and watch him move in your life. All right, get to take another quiz. Do you frequently feel nervous and on edge? Yes or no? <laughs> Do you obsess over what has happened in the past and or what is about to happen? Do you have constant feelings of fear or dread that something's going to happen? Are you easily annoyed and irritated even by minor things, by those real, real small things? If somebody says, if so, you, you'll think like, you know, oh, toothpaste not in the tube right. Maybe somebody didn't unload the dishwasher or something, or put a dirty dish in, in with the dirty, put a dirty dish in, in with the clean dishes. Minor things. Do you worry excessively or have a hard time controlling negative thoughts? If you are, the, if you answer yes to more than five of those things, you may need to start thinking about. Who can you talk to? Who can you turn to? All right, next. All right, how do we, re how should you reduce your anxiety? So search for ways to calm yourself. Examples might include soft music, reading a book, talk to someone, take a walk, play with your pet, watch TV, Take a bath, go outside, cooking, playing piano, taking a drive. Number of things. Try deep breathing. Sometimes you can get on those apps. Come on TV or you can get them on your phone. Prayer and Thanksgiving. Always in order. Always in order. Prayer and Thanksgiving. And supplication of petition to God. Next. Depression. Young people can feel sad and worried about different life events such as an exam, fights with their family, or fights with their friends, changing schools, moving homes. If the feelings of sadness go on for weeks or months and it affects their everyday life, the young person may have depression. Symptoms of depression in young people include feeling grumpy, having trouble sleeping, mm -hmm. feeling worthless, nobody loves me, nobody loves me, yeah, you say you love me, but you don't really love me, guilty, eating more or less than usual, gaining or losing weight, just some, just some, but depression. There is no single cause of depression, but it can develop from life events, things happening in your life, genetic disposition. Hormones are a combination of these factors. So, encourage young people to talk about how they feel when, with someone they know, such as someone that they trust, such as a pastor, a parent, a teacher, a school counselor, a family member, or a friend. They need to know that there's somebody that they can talk to. Somebody that they can depend on. 
alone. That they can just sit, sit down and just pour out what's going on to them. An important next step is for the person, as I said, to visit a doctor to learn about depression and how it's treated. All right. <coughs> Final topic, suicide. These are some statistics I got off my website before I left school. According to the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, suicide is the third <coughs> leading cause of death in our state for people between the ages of 10 to 14. Look at that age. 10 to 24. 10, 10 to 24, I'm sorry. 10 to 24. Young people committing suicide. Unfortunately, the stigma, the myths, and misinformation about suicide prevents both adults and young people from discussing this topic. They don't want to touch it. But recognizing the signs and the symptoms of suicide and knowing who to call for help is a way to prevent suicide. I have a short, is that the next question? Next option is the video. It's not? All right, next slide then. All right. Yeah, but tell me you got a short video. Short video. You're turning it down. Start it over. Turn it, start it over. Start it over so everybody can. She might be depressed. Not just feeling down. Really depressed. Alright, we're gonna start it over. I might have some downs. She's like anybody else. Maybe more than anybody else. I can be hard to figure out. I like my privacy. I don't want you looking over my shoulder all the time. But you know your kid better than anybody else. And if you think he's acting different than usual. Acting really down. Crying all the time for no good reason. Or getting really mad. Or not able to sleep. Or sleeping too much. Shutting your friends out or giving your stuff away. Acting reckless, drinking, using drugs, staying out late. Something that doing stuff he used to love. Or doing stuff that's just not like him. It might be nothing to worry about. It might just be high school. Or it might be something more. He might be depressed, not just feeling down, really depressed. It might be that your kid is thinking about killing himself. It happens more than you think, more than it should. And people say, I have no idea. I thought it was just a phase he was going through. I never thought she'd do it. I wish she'd come to me. I wish she'd said something. I wish I'd said something. When it's too late. So if you think your kid's acting different, if she seems like a different person, say something. Say, what's wrong? How can I help? And ask straight out. Are you thinking about killing yourself? It doesn't hurt to ask. In fact, it helps. When people are thinking about killing themselves, they want somebody to ask. They want somebody to care. Maybe you're afraid you'll make it worse if you ask. Like, you'll put the idea in their head. Believe me, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't hurt to ask. In fact, the best way to keep a teenager from killing herself is to ask, are you thinking about killing yourself? And what if they say yes? Or maybe. Or sometimes? Well, here's what you don't say. That's crazy. Don't be such a drama queen. You're making too much of this. That boy's not worth killing yourself for. That's not going to solve anything. You're just trying to get attention. You're not going to kill yourself. <clears throat> what you do say is, I'm sorry you're feeling so bad. How can I help? We'll get through this together. Let's keep you safe. A lot of people think about killing themselves. Adults and kids. Most of them never try, but some of them do. So if your kid says, I'd be better off dead. I can't live with this. I'm gonna kill myself. Take her seriously. Find someone she can talk to about it. Someone who knows how to help her. Sometimes kids want to kill themselves because something happened. A breakup, a failure. But sometimes it goes deeper, and it's not going to go away by itself. 
Get some help. Talk to your doctor. Or a counselor at school. Or your minister. But don't just let it drop. And make sure that your kid always has someone to turn to. Someone you trust. Make a list together. Write them. Three, four, five names. What's a suicide hotline number on there, too? Have him keep that list in his wallet so he always knows where to turn. Be sure your home is safe. If you have pills she could use to hurt herself, lock them up. If you have a gun, don't just lock it up. Get it out of the house. Bullets, too. And one more thing. If you think your kid might be about to hurt himself, don't leave him alone. Take him to the emergency room. Call 911 if you have to. We all have our ups and downs, but sometimes it's more than that. If you think something's wrong, the only way to find out is to ask. Ask straight out. Are you thinking about killing yourself? Don't wait till you're sure. Trust your gut, because it never hurts to ask. And it can make a big difference. All the difference. In your kids in life. included on your last sheet some different resources that are available for anyone that um, that needs help, 911 emergency services, so forth and so on. And so that is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Beautiful.